You're listening to Kvetch with Sless. I'm in Amsterdam. I've been here for about a week. I've never travelled like this on my own before, and can I just say, it's fabulous. I hired a bike, I rode around the city, saw the old parts, the new parts, and at times felt completely consumed by the fog of marijuana smoke. Here they seem to smoke hash, and I haven't smoked hash for a very long time. In fact, last time I smoked hash was in Portugal. And I had a drug in, drug-induced psychosis at the time, and the smell of hash makes me feel quite agitated. Besides that, it's been a pretty amazing trip. So I had this bike, I rode it around the city along canal tracks. I got lost. In fact, I got lost one time coming back from a gig. I scored a gig in the Comedy Cafe in Amsterdam and truth be known, I thought it would be different from Melbourne gigs. In Melbourne gigs in comedy rooms, the the entrenched sexism, racism, anti-Semitism and misogyny is appalling. So I'd get to this gig right on the other side of Central Station and it's a mixture of international comics from Germany, from America, from Australia, from all over the world. And my sadness reached new depths in terms of comedy. There was misogyny, there was racism, and there was for me a deep-seated sense of anti-Semitism. A German guy told anti-Semitic jokes and as a comedian it's very hard to to counter this I find because you're meant to be up on stage being funny and if you start to counter it well you just sound like a grumbling moaning bitching kind of person I, I don't know how to deal with it really um, and, and I left that gig feeling quite perturbed not least because I'd ridden along to the other side of the town on the other side of the world and Surprise, surprise, there was no pay. There wasn't even a free beer. No matter, that seems to be the comedy world at this level. So I I hop on my bike and I I ride around thinking I'm in the right direction and I come across my first windmill leering at me from from a dark space. And and I nearly shoot myself because I thought it was a Dalek. Um, rearing out of the dark. It was quite funny actually. I rode back and five days later after riding everywhere, queuing up for museums that I didn't go into because the queues were so long, sitting outside the Anne Frank house for, I don't know, maybe one, two hours hoping to score a ticket and then not scoring a ticket and actually moving away from it because it felt maudlin. It, it brought me back to the book by Maria Tamark and trauma escapes and why people go back to spaces where there has been trauma, whether it's the um, Trade Centre, World Trade Centre in America or other spaces. And here was hundreds, and I literally mean hundreds of people milling around outside the Anne Frank house waiting for tickets some had already pre-purchased but there's a deal where you can wait till 3 30 in the afternoon and if the queue is not too immense then you two might be able to uh, climb those stairs where Anne Frank hid for so long and I watched people go in and out of the museum and this guy came out he was very smartly dressed he had sunglasses on and he had no expression on his face on his face as he exited the Anne Frank Museum and you know it just felt maudlin. It felt it felt actually disrespectful uh, to the memory of Anne Frank and to to what happened during the Second World War to keep waiting and, and waiting for a ticket to go into a space where somebody had suffered uh, such deprivation and trauma and eventually uh, leading to her death. That, that I didn't stay, that I made a decision, didn't stay and, and, and I guess said a, a small blessing outside of the house in, in her memory. I also went to the Jewish Quarter in Amsterdam, which was actually really lovely. It's kind of a small area. There's the Jewish Museum, a Holocaust Museum, a Holocaust Memorial Museum 
and a synagogue, an ancient synagogue, the fact of which I don't have in front of me, but a very, very old, beautiful synagogue. And and it was lovely, I guess, you know, this trip is a, a homage to, to my past and who I've become now as a result of owning my Judaism. And so this is my last day in a six day stay over in Amsterdam. The people of Amsterdam who I've encountered have been incredibly polite and lovely, um, so polite in fact that I saw this huge traffic jam uh, and in order for the traffic jam to be dispersed one man said he was in an open top buggy he just looked at everybody else and said hello and the traffic kind of just dispersed it was really weird um, and, and and lovely at the same time because in Australia well we've got road rage haven't we and we love to own our road rage so I gave back the bike yesterday it was like losing a mate um, I gave it back and I kind of walked around a bit and yeah I felt a bit bereft I've you know, enjoyed enormously sitting in lots of bars and cafes and drinking beers and eating beautiful smoked salmon and cheeses. Oh my God, the cheeses are incredible here. I've enjoyed it and um, and read so many great books. Real Stories from a Loud Woman by Lindy West is is the comedy manifesto that everybody needs to read life-changing um, she talks about um, misogyny in comedy rooms and how you know we can't we can't censor comedy or you know question mark can comedy be censored because you know isn't comedy meant to be um, transcend censorship it's made me change my view about how to uh, approach comedy in rooms I suppose in that oh, I just have to name it name it shame it and out it every time I hear it and hopefully you know there's a forum in in Australia called bloody funny women it's a Facebook forum and somebody yesterday described an instant that they were running a room uh, an all women's comedy room in Melbourne and she got advised by the guy who runs the pub that he didn't like her foul language and he wanted her to stop the other comedians talking about their vaginas enough you know it, I think if I was there actually I, 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 I can still do this later I suppose is get women together and, and say enough make an example of this and be explicit about what is happening in comedy rooms because as Lindy West states it is the shrill chatter it is just the chatter that happens all the time sorry not the shrill chatter is the name of her book um it is the it is the murmurings that always go on in these rooms that is the fuel to the fire and I vacillate continually between needing stage time, wanting stage time to hold my craft, to work out whether a joke is working or not, and then completely finding those spaces, those comedy rooms abhorrent to everything that I guess I stand for, that, um, that you know, you, you cannot be there in those spaces and not feel somehow that you're being complicit in the conversation and allowing the endless, endless diatribe of misogyny and racism and anti-Semitism. Um, a work in progress, that one. So it's my last day in Amsterdam. I'm going to go on a canal for an hour or so, a canal ride. And then I will go back to my hotel room and keep riding and keep reading and keep thinking. You're listening to Kvetch with Sless on our travels. First stop Amsterdam tomorrow, Krakow.